So I haven't done a project update in a while. I thought I would show you one of the things I'm working on. Uh, I've had to kind of put my um, my Volkswagen 18T engines, those are over here on the stands, uh, on hold for a little bit because I have some of those are going in uh, two different 944s. I've had to put those on hold a little bit because I have uh, another pressing project. So this is my, my Miata, the, the Zebra Miata. Uh, it is a 92 NA chassis. Um, it actually has a, a 99 um, 1.8 uh, engine in it um, that's running off of the Mitsubishi ECU. That's how I got the car. I've used it for a few years. The engine's getting real tired and weak. It either has a, a, a head gasket issue or a ring issue or other unknown issues once it comes out i'll be able to kind of tear into it a little bit and see but it's way down on power it's running very ragged only running on three c cylinders it seems at times so time to uh to do some sort of a freshen up but what i want to do is um i want to stick with the miata family in terms of engines i don't want to do like a crazy engine swap uh, but i like a little bit more power and I'm also going to upgrade to a real ECU, not a Mitsubishi ECU in a Mazda. So I have here a, uh, an engine from a uh, 2005. This is a VVT engine. So this has the, the variable cam uh, timing. So this, this pipe up along the top and this actuator here uh, is a hydraulic actuator. Uh, there's um, uh, the the intake cam sprocket there is um, uh, like it has a kind of a, a rotary hydraulic valve in it so it can change the position of the intake cam relative to the to the timing belt uh, on the crankshaft and all that so um, so this should give it a, a little bit of a bump in power over what I currently have it's a much fresher engine it's a low mileage uh, junkyard engine um, and I'm doing a few things that are going to be compatible with the ECU that I'm running. Um, like one of them is, uh, is coil packs. Uh, I'm going to run individual coil packs. Those are actually VW coil packs instead of the original um, Mazda ones. Uh, I've also put on a real um, uh, 32 tooth, or I guess it's a 36 tooth minus two uh, trigger wheel on the crank. So I'll be getting a better... Uh, better crank signal, um, putting a few extra sensors in there so I can monitor fuel pressure and uh, oil temp and things like that. Um, and uh, oil oil temp um, behind here, I've got a, a, a new Bosch uh, knock sensor running a, a different knock sensor than standard. Um, here I've tapped into the banjo bolt for the oil feed and this is a Bosch uh, pressure temp combo sensor to feed the ECU and then I still have the OEM um, pressure sensor for the for the gauge on the dash um, and I've got some some custom injectors uh, I'm going to be running a uh, manifold uh, absolute pressure sensor a map sensor I've teed off into one of the, the ports one of the uh, uh, one of the bypass exhaust bypass ports in the in the manifold and so um, I'm gonna be wiring all these up so to make the the wiring harness to make this this work in the car I've got my my Mtron ECU I'm gonna be using the Mtron KV8 from um, Cohesion Motorsports is my uh, my preferred stateside vendor for the Mtron I've got the Mtron in another car and I'm super happy with it and excited to, to be having it in the in the Miata as well. So I'm working on making the harness and I thought I'd show you a few details on the harness here. So I've spent a lot of time kind of planning out what I'm gonna do. I'm using my, uh, like, a, like a tailor's uh, cloth tape measure here so I can measure all the runs in the engine compartment, like from the firewall, you know, to, uh, to each sensor. And because I've got the, uh, the, the VVT engine here, you know, I can kind of uh, check everything and mock it up there to make sure it fits. Uh, and I've done a lot of planning. I have all of my, my pinouts, right? So this piece of paper here is the pinouts from the ECU and they're all identified. I have that all on a spreadsheet here for, you know, the main A plug, B plug, etc. 
and then I've got everything identified for um, you know what sensor it's going to and then I've got all my measurements for the, the lengths and then the bottom part of the spreadsheet is kind of the the sensor side plugs because you know some sensors are going to ground or going to the instrument cluster or whatever so I'm able to uh, uh, you know as I wire them up uh, check them off and make sure that I'm running the right length wires and making sure that I'm getting all the the pins correct I also have my my Mazda, my Miata wiring harness here, so I can see like on the different sensor plugs, um, you know, I can see which which uh, um, pins are going to what because I'm reusing a lot of the the Miata uh, sensors. So I'm able to to look at this, and I'm able to um, to make sure that I'm I'm wiring it all up right. I mean, I guess I won't be 100% sure until I put it in the car and and get it running. So I have maybe, I don't know, about two thirds of the plugs wired on. Um, I still have the MAP sensor plug, O2 sensor, uh, two of the pressure temp combo ones, and then a, a knock sensor to put on the harness. And I just put on the, the last um, injector one. And so I thought before I heat shrink and, uh, and move them and cover it up, this would be a, a good time to, to make this little video and show you. The Wiring harness construction has been slow, but um, okay. Um, I have been starting on, you know, the, the thing furthest away on each branch. So this this branch here, this is going, um, uh, this has their fuel injectors. So this is going um, kind of next to the fuel rail uh, inside kind of the, the intake manifold. And it's gonna come up to the front of the engine and you know, here's the plug for the, the crank position, right? So that's that's my longest run. So that's the, the one I started with first, right? So I figured out my uh, wire length and I cut those and I crimped the little pins on and then pushed them into the connector and then put a, a piece of heat shrink and a wire loom over it. And then, you know, I went to the next longest one, right? So the next one is is this one, which is the, the air intake temperature, right? And so I keep going, um, you know, further inwards, closer to the firewall until I get to a, a junction, right? So then here's a spot. This is going to be kind of like uh, kind of right under the throttle body or so, kind of at the end of the fuel rail there. And so this is splitting off to my TPS sensor, my VVT actuator, the air intake sensor, uh, air intake temp sensor and the cam sensor. Uh, so those are, you know, all kind of branching off off of here. Um, oh, and also the uh, the idle idle control stabilizer. Uh, uh, this is the plug for um, fuel pressure. Actually, it'll be fuel temperature and fuel pressure at the rail. And then I've got my four injector plugs. Um, one, two, three, and then number four here. And so that's going to be like one branch of the wire. And then this other branch here, these are my coil pack plugs. And then I go to uh, the water temp um, uh, sensor at the back of the engine. This is the cam position sensor at the back of the engine. And then this is going to be my head ground at the back of the engine. And then I'm going to have another branch. That's where these plugs are going to be on. These are going to be another branch that's going to kind of go along the the body or along the side of the engine compartment, so, right? So, so we've got the that first branch is going to go kind of under the intake manifold and go in front of the engine. That second branch is going to do the coil packs and go to the back of the engine. And then I'm going to have one that comes up the, uh, the the side of the frame rail and goes to the very front of the radiator and it's going to go down to the the oxygen sensor and and things like that. Uh, and actually. So there's going to be one more little branch that's going to go under the manifold, and that's going to go to the oil pressure and the um, oil temp uh, pressure combo sensor and the knock sensor. So that's going to that's going to be there. And then from the firewall, um, again being a, a track car, uh, it's going to be relatively easy. I'm just going to come out of the firewall, and then I'm going to put the ECU. I'm going to actually put it a little closer to the the firewall there but it's gonna be um, just uh, you know, on top of the, the center tunnel there. And then I'm gonna have some relays above it. Relays, I already have one relay there. Let's see, the one relay up there on the, the dash, that's for the, the fuel pump. But uh, with this ECU, I'm gonna run some extra relays for the uh, main ignition and for the injectors. 
and uh, I do another relay for the starter. So actually I will give the ECU a start input from the button and then the ECU will control the starter through, uh, through a relay. So that's, uh, that's kind of how it's, how it's going. Um, I probably should have bought more colors of wires. I am uh, reusing a bunch of colors, but um, I'm gonna be able to, you know, I'll, I'll verify all of the connections with the multimeter and make sure that, you know, each plug is, kinda, is plugged into the, the right plug for the back of the ECU. But one thing I've done is there's some branch wires, right? So there's uh, there's an output from the ECU for sensor ground. A lot of the different sensors you share the same ground, or like the fuel injectors all share the same positive from the uh, from the the um, ignition relay, and um, those I'm doing like when they share a, a common wire, I'm doing a, a barrel splice or an inline splice. Um, so those are this little box of, of things, these uh, kind of inline splice kit things. So these allow you to do a nice little splice in line like that um, to, to tee into an existing wire so you don't have to run multiple wires or do a, a big splice at the end. So now that I've done this little splice, I'm gonna slide a little piece of heat shrink over there and heat shrink it down and then I'll slide a piece of loom over it and then I'll slide another, a larger piece of heat shrink to go on the outside. And so that's what I've done, you know, at, at all of these little branches here. And so one of the things that makes the, the wiring harness kind of slow going is um, it's uh, like you can't like do 10 connections and crimp all 10 connections and do the heat shrink for all 10 connections. You have to do them, you know, one at a time, right? You do a connection, you do the heat shrink, you do the loom, do another heat shrink, and then you go do the next connection, and then you crimp it and you, you repeat the process. And then also trying to, you know, not forget anything, making sure that I'm working the longest run all the way into the shortest run so that I don't have to then, you know, tie in or, you know, I suppose I could, you know, cut open the what I've done and redo it, but knock on wood, so far I've not had to do that. And then, uh, you know, I've got all my, kind of my, my main trunk of wires here. Um, I'm going to get a nice uh, grommet for the firewall to pass it through. And then once I have that and I have everything done, then I'll be able to trim them all to the final length and, uh, again, put on all of the, the ECU plugs. And they should plug nicely into the ECU. And there are some ones that come off of the ECU plugs that go to, uh, you know, switched power and, and main power and things like that. So that's, um, that's this project. If, uh, if I'm in luck... Hopefully in a week or two, um, I'll be able to uh, to plop that engine in and have a good harness for it and uh, see if it runs and then have to schedule some dyno time and do the final tuning. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I hope this inspires you to work on your own project.